We have relational integrity constraints. Oh, wait, that's referential. We have referential integrity constraints. Now, these are related to two tables. Previously, we only had to deal with one table. Now we're dealing with two. If we have, like, let's say two tuples, and they're from different tables, and we want them to relate to each other, we are going to specify a relationship among the tuples in the two relations. The referencing relation, and also the referenced relation. So we have referencing, what we are referring to, and the reference relation, which we referred to. And to do this, we are going to go back into the previous video, link below the like button. We're not actually going to go back, but we're going back to the material there that was with a foreign key. And this is how we are going to be able to do this material. So now with foreign key in mind, we can do this example after looking at this small one right here. So informally, we are going to refer to an existing tuple. Remember, with foreign key, it has to exist. So we have a definition here. If two conditions hold, the referencing integrity constraint from our R1 to R2 is said to hold. And remember, the integrity constraint, we talked about that also previously, entity integrity constraint, no primary key can be null. That is going to follow suit here. If the two conditions hold, the referencing integrity constraint from R1 to R2 is said to hold. It's true. A referential integrity constraint can be displayed in a relational database schema as a directed arc from our R1 to the FK to our R2. And our FK, we've also gone over previously, it is going to be with our key constraints notes. So not the key itself, but FK is going to be our foreign key again, what we talked about previously. So F key is foreign key, we're referencing a lot here because we are going to look at this example. Now this example, what we have here is also some notes so each product number related to an existing department number. When we look at this, we can see that we have our product, our project right here, and then we have our department number that it relates to, the DNUM. And this is gonna go, this is our foreign key, this is the one that we are referenced and we are referring to our DNUMBER, which is a primary key, because we have this underline here, it's a key. Next, we have the DNO is a foreign key. And that's going to be one on the top right. So it's a foreign key and it can relate to our D number. Now, independent and works on are primary super keys. Because if we look at works on and we look at dependent, we have our ESSN in our PNO, and we also have our ESSN independent name. So these are both going to go to our SSN, which is a primary key. Now, that's not the only thing that's going to go to our SSN. The super SSN and our SSN do not have to be the same value. It is a foreign key referring to a, I think this should be a primary key. So our super SSN would be our foreign key and it's referring to the primary key that we have here. We can see that these two come together. Again, they don't have to be the same thing. But that is our example, how we would relate everything together. We can see that it's pretty concise. We have our employee we can relate it to each other. We have the department number that relates it to the department, and this is the foreign key. The department number is a key, and then we have our department number, which relates to the D number, and then we have our locations, the D number going into the D number. And this D number is gonna have to exist for all these other things to exist. Like, if this employee, it can be an employee, but if it doesn't have like a department number, it has nowhere to report to. Same thing with a project. If there's no department number, there's nowhere for the project to go. And same thing with like department locations. So that's going to be it for this example and these notes. And that's going to conclude this section. We've done keys, we've done referential integrity constraints, we've done entity integrity constraints, constraints on nulls, key constraints, domain constraints, and now we are going to finally move on to our application-based constraints.